Hi, this is Mike, Mike's Unboxing on Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a USB bar slash on the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Elite AX V2. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so on today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a USB bar slash without having a CPU or any other components actually on your motherboard. This is going to be really helpful if you're upgrading your motherboard up to the latest and greatest processors, such as the 5000 series from AMD, possibly one of the new X3D chips, in which case the BIOS on the board probably won't recognize the CPU, so you will need to perform a BIOS flash. Also, if your motherboard's uh, gone a little bit haywire and is doing some weird things and you just want to start again with a fresh BIOS, this is a very good way of doing it. Now, there are going to be some things you are going to require to do this. Obviously, the motherboard is one and somewhere safe and sturdy for it to actually be placed on. Uh, I'm going to use this motherboard box for that purpose. You'll also need a power supply. So we're going to use this little Thermaltake SFX one, nice and handy. And you are going to need only two connectors off the power supply. If it's modular, obviously, you just plug in two. If it's a regular power supply of all the cables, these are the only ones you're going to need. One of which is the 8-pin EPS connector or CPU connector. Normally these are split into two lots of four which click together, so you will need that one. And also you will need the main 24-pin power connector. Other than that, that is it for the flashing process. Something else which you will need is actually access to the internet and a computer to download the BIOS file on and also something to store it on as well. So we're going to be using one of these SanDisk flare drives. These are great, very, very compatible, works with every single board I've ever used on this channel. So yeah, highly recommended. I'll try and get Kaf to put some links for these in the video description. So if you do want to pick one of these up, just have it handy. Definitely well worth its weight in gold. So with all that said, let's go over to the computer. We'll download the BIOS, rename the file, extract it, all that kind of good stuff, and show you exactly how it's done. And then in the final part of the video, we'll actually do the BIOS flash itself. Okay, so this is our Windows desktop on another computer. So we're going to insert our USB drive. And uh, this one actually has another BIOS on it. So I'm going to actually format this drive. It's always beneficial to do this. So right click on the drive and we're going to choose format. And you want to make sure it is in FAT32. It won't work unless it's FAT32. The allocation size you can reset to default. If there's anything here written in the volume label section, I would strongly suggest removing that. For some reason, it doesn't like things being written there. So once you're happy, obviously this is going to erase everything on the disk. So make sure you're happy with that when you are happy. Click on start. You'll get the warning come up to say that this will erase all data. Are you really sure? So click OK if you are. Shouldn't take very long at all. And it'll say the format is complete. So that is our drive prepared. Now, if for some reason your drive is in the GPT format rather than being MBR, I would strongly suggest changing that as well. We've done a separate video on that. I'll try and link that in the video description as well, should you be experiencing any problems. Assuming everything is all good, we'll go now and get the BIOS file. So open up your web browser and type in the name of your board, or you can use the links in the video description. We'll go over to the website here from Gigabyte. Now, something which is really important on these boards is to make sure you get the right revision. Now, if you're not sure which revision your motherboard is, if you look down in this bottom corner by the audio chipset, the revision number will be stamped on there. It'll be like Rev 1.1 or 1.4 or whatever it is. And if you've still got the original box, it should be printed on there as well. But if you look on the screen printing down in this corner, you should see it very clearly. Now, our particular instance, we're using a Rev 1.1 board. So we're going to click on here and change to the correct revision. Now we're going to head over to the support tab over here. And now we've got options for things like CPU support. So if you're not sure which BIOS you need, then you can have a look through and see the ones which are available, find your processor, etc. But realistically, probably the best thing to do is actually go with the latest one, which will also have security fixes and things like that. So head over to this BIOS section. And you can see here various versions available. So there's been a few uh, beta ones. You can tell the beta ones because they have a A on the end or C or whatever, rather than being F16 or F15. They don't specifically say it is a beta, but it generally is if it's got that on the end. So the latest one we've got available is from the 23rd of the 3rd, 2023. I think the one which is on the board, at least what I've been told, is uh, either F16A or F16, so it is an older one. But we do want to have support for the 5800X 3D, which we're going to be putting on this board. So we're going to download this bar. So click on the download section here, 
and it will open up in this window. Choose a location. I'm going to do it to the desktop just because it's nice and easy to do that. So click on save and then we can minimize this window because that's being done in the background. And by the time you close it, you should find that the zip folder is going to be in your download location. As I said, for this instance, we're using the desktop. So what we want to do, because this is a zipped file, I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to choose extract all and we're going to extract it to the same location. So just click on extract there. And now we've got a new folder with our files in. Now with this, we do need to rename the file. So that is actually very important to do because the system itself doesn't have the intelligence or the necessary kind of processing power to look at this file and go, oh yeah, excellent, that's a BAS file, I'll flash it. So what you need to do is to rename the file. If you can't see the file extension here, you do need to go to view and go to file name extensions, just make sure those are enabled. So we're going to rename this now. Now you don't have to do this in uppercase or lowercase, it doesn't really make a great deal of difference, but it does have to be the right name. So it's going to be gigabyte.rom, sorry, gigabyte.bin, my mistake. It should be a bin file. And once you've finished typing that in, it will say here, are you sure you want to do this? Because it's going to change the, uh, the file structure. So just click yes. So now we've got our file and also check the file size as well. It should be about 32 megabytes. Uh, 32,000 kilobytes, so that is uh, in the right ballpark. If yours is showing less, then it means the file hasn't been fully extracted. So make sure to unzip it fully before you continue and rename it. So there we go, we're gonna right click now, we're gonna choose cut or copy, choice is yours. And what we wanna do is to put it onto our USB drive. So we're gonna right click on there and choose paste. You can use the send to command if you want to, the choice is entirely up to you, but that is it. So this part is done, so now let's head over to the computer and we'll start the flashing process. Obviously, you do need to remove the drive from this computer now to take it to your motherboard. So now we're ready to start the flashing process and I've gone ahead and got the motherboard onto our box here and I've connected up the power supply to the mains. It's not switched on, but it is connected up. We've also got our eight pin EPS connector, which is plugged into here at the top left. And also we've got our 24 pin connector to make sure they're all fully seated. Now this is the question I get asked quite a lot actually all the time, do you need to rename the file and does the motherboard have to be completely bare? The answer to the first one is yes, you do have to rename the file, otherwise your system just will not be able to recognize it. It doesn't know what to do with the file, so it won't flash. So you do have to do that part. That is extremely important. The next part, does the motherboard have to be bare? Well, not entirely. For me personally, I think that it's best if you can do it on a bare board that way, if for some reason the flash process doesn't work, you've obviously got a limited set of components which can be causing the problem. Is it going to be the motherboard? Is it the USB stick? Whereas if you've got other components attached, your graphics card, your RAM, CPU, etc., one of those could be doing it. You'd never know. And especially if you've got a non-working system to begin with, it's very hard to diagnose these things. So ideally, if you can, get it down to a bare board and ideally actually out of the case because you never know, it could be your power button, which is faulty, which is in the, stuck in the kind of pressed down position, in which case the motherboard is kind of gonna be in a constant reset state. Same actually goes for the reset button. So if your reset button is broken or in the kind of pushed in state, your motherboard thinks that you're pressing the reset button, so it won't do anything. So these are things which you can obviously eliminate from your diagnostic work. You don't have to, if you've built the system and you're expecting it to work and it hasn't, and you've then gone onto YouTube to find out why it's not working, and then you've realized you need a bars flash, then I completely understand where you're coming from. My suggestion would be, if you can remove something which is simple. So if you don't have thermal paste and you can't remove your CPU and cooler, just remove the things which are really easy to do. Remove your RAM sticks, pretty straightforward and easy to do if you can get hold of them. GPU, obviously, not as easy, but certainly you don't have to do any paste or anything like that. Uh, potentially unplugging the IO. You can just try it straight away, but like I said, ideally the less things on the board to kind of go wrong or to add to the complexity, that is best. Anyway, with all that said, let's get the, uh, the USB flash. So we're gonna plug this into the USB port. It does have to be in the right one as well. It does say on there BIOS next to it. So make sure you plug it into the correct port. When you're ready, turn on your power supply and you should find that your board doesn't try and power up. If your board does actually power up and start the boot process and your fans come on and all that kind of stuff, then you've done something wrong and there's a short somewhere that shouldn't happen. P possibly if you've got RAM in there, which has got RGB on it, those might light up, etc. But 
for all intents and purposes, the board shouldn't do anything at all. And if it has tried to power up, this flash process will not work. So do work backwards and see what you've done wrong. But when we're ready, boss flash button, normally you can just press it briefly and it works. I'd like to do it for the count of three. I don't know why, it's just something that I've always done. So press and hold, so one, two, three, and then release. And then we're looking for, there's a little LED at the bottom there, which hopefully is shining through on the camera. Yep, I can see that there. Now what you wanna be looking for is for that to be changing speeds. This whole process should take somewhere in the region about five to six minutes. Uh, currently it is 22, so we'll see how long that takes. But you're looking for that to actually change speeds. If it flashes about five or six times and then stops or goes solid, that means that either it can't read the file, the file is incorrect, or it doesn't like the USB drive. So again, back to your diagnostic processes, make sure you've got the right file, make sure you've got the right revision for your motherboard. Again, check in that bottom corner, it's just down here. This one says clearly Rev 1.1. Don't rely on the motherboard box, because potentially it might not be in the right box if it's been purchased secondhand or whatever. So always look on the motherboard itself. This one says Rev 1.1. So if I put a BOSS from Rev 1.4, chances are it's gonna throw up an error. But at the moment, it seems to be doing what it needs to do. The light is still flashing away there. So we're gonna let it carry on, do its own thing. And ideally, if you can, kind of set some sort of timer for about five or six minutes. If it goes over six, seven, maybe eight minutes, then something has gone wrong. And especially if the actual light itself hasn't finished doing whatever it needs to do. Some of the bosses actually are really quick as well. So it seems in this instance, I think it's, yeah, the fan has just kicked in on the power supply. So now the speed has changed there. So it's gone from the reading state where it's actually kind of initializing the system. to now it's got to the kind of flashing state. So we've got a slightly slower flashing LED there. Potentially after it's done that, it may go fast again and then turn off. Not entirely sure, but we'll, uh, we'll let it carry on, do its thing, and we'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so there you go. You could hear the uh, power supply there just clicked off, and the LED has turned itself off of this as well. So this means the flash is done, and uh, we're pretty much good to go. So there you go, pretty simple, pretty straightforward thing to do, although it's surprising how many times it can actually go wrong. Realistically, the things where it normally goes wrong is because you're just adding too many complexities into the mix. Like I said, ideally, bare board, on a box, with your power supply and a USB stick, and you shouldn't find any problems at all. Again, if your USB stick isn't compatible, then yeah, that might also throw up things and make sure you're using Windows unzipping utility. If you're using kind of WinRAR or one of those other types of things, potentially it might not always unzip properly. I don't know, I've never used them. I always try and use the one which is built into Windows, which does appear to work much better. And also for those of you that are slightly confused thinking, what is this on the hair? Yes, it isn't the box for the motherboard. So don't get the two confused. This is for the B550 Aorus Elite AX V2 not the B660 Aorus Master. So just to clarify that in case there's gonna be questions in the comments section, of which I do invite. So if you have got any comments or questions on this video, let us know in that comment section. If you need quicker responses, then head over to our Discord chat and uh, we'll be happy to help you or at least try to uh, go through the diagnostic processes with you. But I think that's gonna pretty much wrap this one up. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.